Good morning everybody, welcome to uh, today's indie car from Partick. My name is Gordon Ross. Today I had two uh, pieces of news for you. Some of you will already be aware of one of these bits of news, but I'll come to that in a moment. First of all, some people have been talking to me recently uh, in private messages about the case of Sergei Skripkal and his daughter and their poisoning and how that fits into the new narrative concerning uh, both Syria and Russia. And a friend proposed this morning that the, uh, the Skripals themselves uh, might have been willing actors in this new narrative, uh, the setting up of Russia as the new bad guy, so that the, uh, the West can have some kind of a, um, confrontation with Russia to try and put them in their place. And what he was proposing was that the, the Skripals poisoning, I say this is alleged poisoning, this entire episode where they're poisoned with something which isn't fatal, which is t we're told is fatal, which we're told is a nerve agent, which we are told came from Russia, but which has absolutely no proof of any of these things, that it could be that the Skripals were recruited to be the first actors in uh, a three-act play. Basically, the first action would be for them to be poisoned, the Novichok to be supposedly linked to Russia, so that the Russians get the blame for using, first of all, a chemical weapon, a biological weapon, in the West on British soil. The second stage of this um, hypothetical narrative which has been proposed is that there is then this staged uh, fake um, Syrian attack, this, this nerve gas, this, this poison gas attack, in which we see a 20 second clip of half a dozen children and some men in a room, could be anywhere, uh, with their eyes streaming. Now, your eyes can be streaming for a number of reasons. Tear gas will do exactly to a child what was shown in that video. Their eyes are streaming, their noses are running, they're distressed because it's difficult to breathe with tear gas. All you have to do then is add a hose and wash the children down with it and the tear gas, the remaining droplets of it, are washed off their eyes and their skin and they begin to recover. Giving a child a, a, an inhaler, a Ventolin inhaler to help them breathe is a recognised treatment for the effects of tear gas in children and it would be normal to do that anyway. So again, this would be stage two that there's another uh, false flag shown in the British media and the American media across the world to gain support for an attack against Syria, effectively. But, remember, an attack against Syria and against the, uh, Assad's government is an attack against Russia, which is a committed ally of the Syrian government. And Russia has been protecting the Syrian government forces and has been clearing out all of the, the, the rebels from various strongholds and has been bombing everywhere flat to remove them. So this idea is that stage three of this is for there to be a massive showdown between the West, America, Britain and France on one side and Russia and Syria on the other side. And all of this a concerted effort to create a standoff between America and Russia. Possibly a conventional standoff. The Russians are now threatening to retaliate and shoot down all uh, Western missiles that are fired at Syria. And they're also saying not only will they shoot these missiles down, but they will also track them back to their launch sites and destroy the launchers. Now, in this case, the launchers would be American ships, American aircraft carriers, and possibly even American submarines uh, in probably the Mediterranean. So there is the potential for a massive escalation, a possible uh, global conflict involving America and Russia. Now, Russia is extremely well armed and have been rearming with new weapons and new technologies over the last 25 years. And they are now at least on a par with America in terms of the sophistication of their weapons. And both, of course, are nuclear armed superpowers. So it's a very dangerous moment and the story that I've been um, hearing, the, the proposed hypothetical story, is that the Skripals will now disappear. Nobody has had a chance to talk to them directly and it's possible that their reward for being the first act in this play is for them to vanish to a new life somewhere, maybe in the United States or some other place of their choosing with plenty of money and a new start and new names, new identities. It's highly probable uh, in fact, that this is being used, that they have been used in order to monster the, the Russian Federation.
and it's not beyond anybody's imagination, I think, to see that there have been a series of escalating events which we are being told are either nerve agents, chemical agents or biological agents being used uh, against civilians. So that was the first thing. Second thing, and uh, this is all over social media this morning because I, I heard about it yesterday, didn't have a chance to put it out on the show, and that is the, um, the group which is planning to reform the Constitution of the United Kingdom. This was a group which, if you recall, were met secretly in Edinburgh and we found out about their meeting and sent along a large number of uh, independence campaigners to listen in to what was being proposed by this cross-party group of, shall we say, older MPs, some lords, some English Campbell among other people involved in this mostly, and their remit is to redesign the constitution of the United Kingdom to make it impossible for Scotland to separate itself from the Union. Now, there are copies of the document on, available online all over the place this morning, but my speed read of it yesterday uh, provided some interesting facts. Now, the, the main fact is that they want the UK government and the UK Parliament to be sovereign over every other part of the United Kingdom, permanently. And they want even things like devolution, they want everything to be under the control of the British government, all the way up to and including defence, foreign affairs and even devolution itself. Devolution rules, uh, the rules of uh, referenda, referendums on independence would be vetted by the British state, they would be prevented from happening by the British state. There would be devolution for all as they call it, units of the United We're not even a country anymore. In this document, we're referred to as units. We are a unit of the United Kingdom. And this is a desperate ploy to force the United Kingdom back together, to tie it up and, and to manacle it together so that there is no way that any part of it can break away after uh, the Brexit process is complete. For this particular uh, group to have met and come up with this terrible plan, and uh, you will see more about it in the next few days, I plan to do a more detailed programme on this subject. What you will see is that the details of it prevent all the kinds of things which would allow us to democratically separate ourselves from the United Kingdom. It even specifically excludes Gaelic. From, from Scotland. It would exclude it from the legal framework of the United Kingdom. It would make it almost like a banned language. There are a number of other things that would be uh, prevented from happening, but the primary ones really are a, a complete clampdown on all forms of dissent and all forms of democratic self-determination. They would make the rules and decide whether or not we could vote on anything at all. And it is a very worrying uh, document. If you read it yourself, you'll find it online this morning. A number of people have posted the, uh, the main points of it, the bullet points of what it proposes to do. The fact that it exists now and has been published is a warning to us all. If we do not act this year to separate Scotland from the United Kingdom before Brexit, if this particular act, this new Constitution Act, is passed, then any chance of becoming independent from the United Kingdom will be almost gone. Remember that Scottish sovereignty, which is written into the laws of this country, written into the law of Scotland, it's the fundamental founding principle of the oldest democracy on the planet, Scotland. The founding principle is that the people of Scotland are sovereign, not Westminster, not the monarch. We have always been sovereign. We have always held the power in our own hands, but we've been told repeatedly over 300 years that this law has somehow been overwritten by British legislation. This is not true. But this new constitutional act that they are proposing would obliterate all of that completely and would force this, it would force British uh, sovereignty on every single person in every part of the United Kingdom, whether they wanted it or not. And it would bind them 
together forever without any chance of ever having another independence referendum in our lifetimes, ever. And I'm talking about in perpetuity. The British government has obviously seen the writing on the wall. Brexit was the biggest mistake that this country has ever made as, as a united kingdom. It has taken an action to pull itself out of a very beneficial trading union for no other reason than some people see it as a way of controlling immigration. Now, immigration could have been controlled in a whole lot of other ways, and immigration is not the problem in the United Kingdom. The problem in the United Kingdom is debt, and the fact that the country is broke and cannot afford the people who are migrating here for the jobs that are here. They cannot afford to support people anymore. Britain is overcrowded, it's far too successful for its own good, and it's drawing people from all over the continent. Because it's so wealthy, because it has been so successful in attracting jobs and wealth, it's about to end. It's about to end in the most undignified, humiliating way that you can imagine. And because of that, people across the United Kingdom are worried, they're sickened, they want out of this before anything happens. And this constitutional reform group, which, by the way, is the most unconstitutional group I have ever encountered anywhere in the UK, it's basically going to steamroller over every single piece of constitutional law in Scotland and completely remove it in favour of this overarching framework, as they call it. This framework isn't a framework at all. It's a cage. It's a constitutional cage to keep us in and to stop us getting out of Brexit. And for, for this to be published today is an astonishing affront to every single voter in, in Scotland. It is an incendiary uh, announcement to say that we are going to stop your country from ever getting free of this union. We're going to prevent you from ever getting your, your, uh, your constitutional independence back. And we're going to do that by forcing a law through in the UK, which you have no hope of defeating because you're outnumbered in our parliament anyway. So that's the end of that. It's a terrifying prospect. And if this doesn't push the Scottish government into making some hard choices very soon, I will be very surprised. This has just upped the ante another order of magnitude. It's taken the risk to Scotland to a whole new level today. And when I say a whole new level, I'm talking about the end of Scotland as a country, not, not just a setback to us. This would be a permanent extinction of Scotland, the nation, the end of Scotland's constitutional independence from the UK. We would no longer be in a union, we would be in a dictatorship. A dictatorship that we cannot get out of except by having some kind of military coup, because the only other way out of this, once once these rules are put in place and we're overrun and controlled from Westminster, that's basically the end of Scottish devolution. It has no purpose after that. It's just a sham. It would be a, a bit of play acting, a bit of uh, a circus. So everything that happened in the Scottish uh, Parliament would simply be like a town council enacting some local laws that are of no importance to the, the rest of the nation at all. And I can see this as being the final nail in the coffin of any chance of getting independence. If we don't do something now, this year, if we don't call this referendum and the SNP does not act before Brexit, then this constitutional act will come into force. David Mundell has challenged in the courts, or wants to challenge in the courts, the whole devolution settlement. He wants to actually challenge the Scottish Government's right to exist. And if he's successful, he's hoping that his new shadow government, which he's setting up in a different building in Edinburgh, which I warned everybody about several months ago, if he succeeds in doing that, it's another part of this scheme. The scheme to give power back to the United Kingdom and to prevent the Scottish Parliament and the Scottish Government having any power at all to do anything. The risks are so high now that there is no way a second referendum can't happen. Because if it doesn't happen, then we might as well all 
just go back to bed and forget about independence forever because it's not going to happen. It's not going to be allowed to happen. The only chance for our democracy is going to be this year. Sometime before the end of 2018, there will be a vote on the future of the Union. I'm not going to say the I word anymore. The I word no longer attracts much uh, much enthusiasm, shall we say. And also the R word, referendum, doesn't attract much enthusiasm. We're going to have a vote about keeping Scotland's sovereignty and returning all of its powers. We're going to vote about ending the Union. That is what we are going to be doing. We're not talking about independence anymore. We're talking about freeing Scotland from the bindings of this current Union before it's made permanent, because that's what's being planned. The Union is going to end with this new bill. The end of the Union will spell the creation of this new super British country, which will be one unitary nation. They claim that there will be devolution in it, but that devolution is within this cage, in this framework that they call it. It's a cage to keep us from escaping. A constitutional cage by any other name. So I will leave you with these thoughts today. It's a scary prospect. There will be more information from IndyCar later in the week as I read more of the document and I will give you some more details on exactly what this constitutional reform group is planning to do. Frankly, I think it's terrifying. It's, a, it's an Orwellian scheme to keep the four disparate parts of the United Kingdom from going their separate ways. It's a desperate act by a desperate British government which is looking down the barrel of the end of the Union, and it knows it, and this is their last roll of the dice. We have to be up to the challenge of this roll of the dice. We have to call the bluff on this, because if we don't, we might as well give up. That's all I have to say today, but think on everybody. Have a look online, you'll find uh, the Constitutional Reform Group if you search it on Google and have a look at what they propose yourselves. Read it for yourselves, don't take my word for it. The evidence is there in black and white. It's coming from the British government. They're saying it's a cross-party group. What that means is that every part of the British establishment is taking part. The Lib Dems, the Tories especially, and the Labour Party have all got their fingerprints all over this. It's full of peers, it's full of unworthy uh, ancient politicians and people who think they know what is best for us. Fortunately, we know better. But it's time that we stopped uh, talking about independence and said it's about ending the union. It's not about independence anymore. We're already financially independent. We don't even need to say the I word anymore. We just need to get out of the union and that's what it's about. So when it comes to the vote, it's actually going to be a bit like the EU uh, referendum. It's going to be leave or remain. And I'm a leaver. I'm for leaving the UK forever. When I saw this document, that just cemented the thing in my mind. I thought there is no way that I would ever, ever agree to what this group is proposing. And I'm sure when you read it yourself, you'll agree. Anyway, I'm off. I have got to do some real work now, but Think on. I'll speak to you tomorrow. We'll have more detail on this horrific proposal by the Constitutional Reform Group, as they call themselves. But keep your eyes peeled. Look for more announcements from the UK government. The, the First Minister is in China at the moment, and I think what she's trying to do there, and I hope I'm right, is to have a heads of agreement with the Chinese government that as soon as Scotland leaves the British Union we will have a strong trading agreement with China right from the get-go, right from the start. China is the biggest trading nation on the planet. And remember, Scotland's exports to China jumped by 40% this year alone. This past year, 40% exports increased to China. Now, that's a sign that something big is coming. That's why Nicola Sturgeon is in China. We can look forward when we do leave the Union to a very good relationship with China. China is going to be changing itself in the next few years. It's got a bad reputation for human rights. It has been imprisoning political prisoners for, for quite a long time. But it's now changing and it's becoming more Western. It's beginning to see that it needs to trade back into the West. And to do that, it has to accept that it's made 
uh, bad mistakes in the past and it has been imprisoning people without charge and it has been imprisoning political activists without charge. That, thing, that sort of thing needs to stop before we can do any trade with them. But I'm certain that Nicola Sturgeon, who's taken advice on this, will say to China that we want to have a good, strong uh, partnership with them when we leave the United Kingdom, but we insist that China does something about the people it keeps in its jails, the political activists that it's imprisoned for very little reason at all, that they should be released, and China should take a full part in the global economy, as it has been doing, but take a full part in terms of its politics as well. OK, I'm off. I will see you later before I ramble on any further. But be warned, the, uh, the Constitutional Reform Group has published its first draft, and I think it makes horrifying reading. See you later.